I'm Jeff. I'm as much a networking guy as one could be, and I would love to talk about BGP, but that's not why you're here. Right? <laughs> uh, I'm going to talk about uh, edge computing. So last time I was here, I was talking about SDN and startup doing SDN things. And it's doing pretty well. It's a startup in Spain, and you know we are doing our stuff. But for me, it's yesterday. It's done. Deal. So what's next? and I believe it is edge computing. There's huge opportunities, it's coming. And not only because we need it as a consumer, it's the last hope of telcos. If they don't succeed to build edge platforms and attract over the top people to share revenue with them, they're done. They're already done, dumb pipes to provide data. Now there's an opportunity to put a bit of compute somewhere close to base station or CMTS or DSLAM and get some piece of pipe. There are two parts to it. There's uh, mobile edge computing, because we call it now multi-access, because it's not only mobile. Potentially, you could put something close to a subscriber at cable modem, CMTS location, DSLAM location, but the radio is still the main use case. So all the focus goes, how do we integrate mobile edge compute platform next to base station? And if you don't know, there are a lot of problems with signaling. In most cases, traffic from base station in radio back to the packet core is encrypted. Encrypted traffic cannot be sent to mobile edge compute platform. So regulations, how to decrypt traffic, how to share keys, there's a lot of problems to be solved. Uh, so this is a separate thing. I'll be talking about more how do we deploy edge computing for verticals, for floors. Difference between warm and hot data. And what's really needed on platform and could give you some ideas for the next startup. There are already a number of startups who are still in stealth mode working on similar approaches. They're trying to work with Siemens, with ODSS, and this kind of people of our world. And problem hasn't been solved. When you deploy your device, it's cheaper to throw it away than to upgrade. When you deploy it, you want it to be secure. We've seen last year <coughs> horrible dust attacks because these small devices are not secure. Security is last thing you would implement if you sell it for $5. So how to secure it, how to provide lifecycle management, how to upgrade it, and how to provide a thin visualization layer. But remember, it's not your host with two terra hard drive and 32 gig of memory. It's something, fraction of it. If you take vanilla hypervisor, you are talking about two gig of memory, right? So bringing it down to two max is an interesting and quite complicated way while providing hardware assisted. So personal computing, 300 billion market by now, started 1990s. It was mostly used to increase productivity. We got Word, Excel, and all that stuff. Mobile computing that started about 15 years ago was all about communication. We started as person-to-person -person communication. Today it's a lot about machine-to-machine -machine communication, but still a lot of communication between people to things, things to things. Cloud computing came about seven years ago, but today one billion plus market, much more, 100 billion. It's all about utility. As we see today, what Google's, Amazon's provide, it's compute as utility. We can do our things on their infrastructure. Edge computing is needed because not everything could be done centrally. A lot of things due to regulations, due to latency constraints, to proximity, have to be done locally and near real time. So if you look what's done today, uh, we've seen announcement from AWS or Greengrass, Google and Microsoft are coming with similar platform. What they do, they provide cloud APIs, Clover, 
to the endpoints. However, what they don't do, they don't have the processing capability. They have very limited logic to how to react on particular events. So they rely on ability to send data back to the cloud, respective to whether data is warm or hot. So warm data could potentially be processed remotely. Hot data has one millisecond or less span of life, so you either react on it or it's dead. It's meaningless. So if you look at today's IoT model, it's fully centralized. Everything being transported back to data centers by using IoT gateways, by using green satellite devices, we lose proximity. So when reaction needs to be within millisecond, it cannot be done. So as we look at it tomorrow, we see that more and more devices are going to create meshes. So if you think about fog compute notion, it's distributed workload, locally computed, locally done, very little amount of information, probably just the storage part goes there. There is absolutely critical separation between hot and warm data. If you are on fabric floor and you cannot react to particular events within microseconds, and so talking to people like uh, Siemens, they are not talking milliseconds, they are talking microseconds. So it's such a short period of time, if you need to put piece of data on the cable, before you even start sending it, you're already out of time. So it's mandatory to be able to provide such capability at the edge, possibly within tens of meters of devices. So HKRK, we always think about ability to provide more compute and more bandwidth. So if you look at the slide, the part that is low bandwidth but high compute is economically unviable due to the price versus revenue delivered. So it's a market that's going to open now and going to grow significantly within the next three, four years, especially given the upcoming 5G ability to provide separate networking, separate slicing to this kind of networking. So it's needed and it doesn't exist. So if you think of next startup, it could be something for you. So what we are trying to do at the edge is to bring together, to bring together what we do on the cloud where everything is virtualized, automated in immutable, on the embedded side of things, things are physical, distributed, and very low level. Some of them are still coded in assembly, or C. So they cannot afford to have Java piece of code taking 50 meg of memory. So very different paradigms, very different types of deployments. The new platforms going to come at the edge has to combine those both being real time, being secure, and providing uh, so intrinsically security. If, if you deploy it somewhere at the edge, you should be able to distribute keys, you should be able to provide encryption, you should be able to build an overlay without need someone going there and doing particular configuration. So it's kind of new type of system type we don't know yet. And there are many companies in this space providing different capabilities. However, none of them does all of it and does it in a way it would work at the new age. So again, I think there's a lot of opportunities to provide secure, manageable networking to those devices as well as new virtualization there that doesn't exist today. And it should be simple, secure, manageable, and open sourcing at least the core of it. I would say, as of today, pretty much mandatory. If you don't have large community contributing, working on it, it's not going to succeed. Questions? Um, question. So, uh, do you? Um, so, are you recommending uh, recommending that this kind of cloud platform be enabled 
at this IoT edge, which is same as the edge computing paradigm that people are talking about? Is that the same thing, or are you moving it further down to the base station and are recommending uh, that uh, different kinds of hardware be being built to put this kind of cloud image? Absolutely. So if you look at mobile edge computing use cases, mm -hmm. there are really none. The only one being discussed is VR, AR, mm -hmm. right? It's non-existent market. They're not enough devices. They're too expensive. Mm -hmm. So investing into hardware at base station level, and investment would be done by people like uh, Tower America and people who own real estate is unclear. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of money with unclear returns. Mm -hmm. In this case, it's mostly about automation and verticals and working with companies like Siemens, like Dell, like HP who are building the small devices and providing proper virtualization and lifecycle management top of it. And so, so tell me again, so are you saying that there will be a new kind of device with new specifications because the current hardware that sits close to base station that has a very stringent parameters, right, which you talked about, right? A few megs and so are you saying that they, they sh that newer hardware with different capabilities supporting multiple verticals should be placed in the same location or you would move it out to a different location? I would probably do it even closer than base station and we will see densification of base station anyway as 5G requires it. Uh, there's existing hardware that doesn't have virtualization capabilities right. today right. and usually when you need to upgrade it, you throw it away. Mm -hmm. So it's not very really flexible in terms of uh, uh, life cycle and Moreover, if you want to run third-party VNFs on it, it's impossible because due to size and amount of memory and compute, mm -hmm. there's no virtualization layer. So a new type of very thin hypervisor mm -hmm. is to come. You're not, you're not recommending putting VNFs on top of it, right? You're just... I do, oh, but wow. okay. it could be as thin as something with Unicare or something that's extremely, extremely small and efficient. Mm. Okay. So there is a program called as Open Edge, actually, which follows a similar model. Uh, it's offshoot from OpenStack, I think. And uh, pretty much uh, the community out there exists, which is trying to solve pretty much this problem and beyond. Like, once you get to this level, what you really need to think about is also the high availability. For example, these edge services, once they are up there on the edge, and for example, the base station goes off, the ability to actually replicate all the all the services that were running on this edge onto another edge so that the end device which was actually rendering the service from this edge continues to get the service is I, I, there is some initiative going on in this area um, I'm a little bit involved but I keep reading on that every now it, it's basically they've used terms like cloudlets and everything over there a lot to define such uh, environments so specifically to mobile use case, they're completely decoupled from mobile semantics. Uh, if you look at today's mobility, it's an unsolved problem. As you move from base station to base station, you change IP address, TCP breaks, uh, your identity breaks. It's a problem much larger than anything else in today's mobile world. And it will take another 10 years to, to solve it. Specifically to cloud management and OpenStack is a cloud management problem. Uh, it's extremely heavyweight. If you look what happened to OpenStack in general, it got choked by its own weight, right? It's impossible to deploy it without 10 people from Mirandis on site. It's impossible to upgrade it in a way it doesn't pack your services. Wait, it's, <laughs> it's just you. Not everybody is you. So, what I'm talking about is much more compact something that understand how to work with very limited hardware in a way it's still efficient and zero touch. Okay, so I think we're probably out of time, Ace, or are we? Thank you.